Have you ever pondered the differences between RNA interference and CRISPR in gene silencing? It's a question that's been at the forefront of genetic research. You see, gene silencing is a way of turning off or silencing genes. It's like flipping a switch on a light, but instead of darkness, we get a halt in gene expression. This is crucial in understanding gene function, disease development, and potential treatments. Two of the most prominent tools in this field are RNA interference, or RNAi, and CRISPR. RNAi works at the messenger RNA level, interfering with the gene expression, while CRISPR makes changes right at the DNA level, creating genetic knockouts. Each has its own unique role in disrupting gene function and brings something different to the table, but how do they stack up against each other? So what makes RNA and CRISPR unique? Let's dive in. To understand what sets RNAi and CRISPR apart, we must first grasp their mechanisms. RNA interference, or RNAi, is a biological process where RNA molecules inhibit gene expression. This typically happens during the translation phase by neutralizing targeted mRNA molecules. Essentially, RNA silences genes by creating what we call knockdowns at the mRNA level. Now imagine RNA as a vigilant guard meticulously checking each mRNA molecule before it can be translated into a protein. If it finds an mRNA from a gene that it's been programmed to silence, it destroys that mRNA, effectively stopping the gene from expressing itself in the form of a protein. It's like the guard has a wanted poster for certain mRNAs and destroys any that match the description on the poster. On the other hand, CRISPR, or Clustered Regularly Interspaced Short Palindromic Repeats, works a bit differently. Instead of targeting the mRNA like RNI, CRISPR goes straight for the source, the DNA. It generates knockouts at the DNA level, effectively making changes in the genome. Picture CRISPR as a skilled surgeon making precise cuts in the DNA to modify or disable specific genes. It's like the surgeon can rewrite the blueprint of life itself, altering the instructions that tell a cell what proteins to make. Thus, while both methods disrupt gene function, they do so at different levels of gene expression. Now that we understand how RNAi and CRISPR work, let's explore their experimental workflow advantages and limitations. Let's start with the experimental workflow. RNAi's process begins with the design and synthesis of small interfering RNAs or CIRNAs. These CIRNAs are then introduced into the cell, where they bind to the RNA-induced silencing complex, or RISC. This complex then uses the CIRNA as a guide to target and degrade the corresponding messenger RNA, effectively silencing the gene. On the other hand, the CRISPR workflow starts with the design of a guide RNA that matches the DNA sequence of the gene you want to knock out. This guide RNA, along with the Cas9 enzyme, is introduced into the cell. The Cas9 enzyme uses the guide RNA to find and cut the DNA at the desired location, disrupting the gene. Now let's look at the advantages. A key benefit of RNAi is its ability to target multiple genes simultaneously, making it an excellent tool for large-scale screenings. CRISPR, however, shines in its capability to create precise genetic modifications. It can not only knock out genes, but also introduce specific mutations or insert new genetic material. But of course, these methods are not without their limitations. RNAi can sometimes lead to off-target effects, where genes similar to the target gene are also silenced. This can complicate the interpretation of results. CRISPR's major challenge is delivery, getting the guide RNA and Cas9 enzyme into cells, particularly in living organisms, can be difficult. Furthermore, while CRISPR offers precise gene editing, it can sometimes make unwanted off-target cuts in the DNA. This could potentially lead to mutations and cellular damage. As we can see, both RNI and CRISPR have their strengths and weaknesses. Each method offers unique capabilities and the decision on which to use depends largely on the specific requirements of your experiment. By understanding these aspects, you can make a more informed choice on the best gene silencing method for your research. So, RNA or CRISPR? Which should you choose for your gene silencing projects? We've delved into their mechanisms, workflows, strengths, and limitations. RNI operates at the mRNA level, generating knockdowns while CRISPR works its magic at the DNA level, creating knockouts. Each has its own advantages and limitations. So, the choice isn't about which is superior, but rather which is more suitable for your unique research requirements. Remember, 
The choice between RNI and CRISPR depends on your specific research needs and goals. Stay curious, stay informed, and continue exploring the fascinating world of genetics.